let's say that I'm a robot in your kitchen, right? Okay. And like, so I need to, I need to be able to understand everything. Like I want to be able to differentiate between like, if I, if I ask you for, sorry, cause I have a robot. Like, okay. So if you if you ask a robot in your kitchen to get me like some particular mug, right? A mug with a horse on it. I don't know. Yeah. Something like this, right? How does it, how is it supposed to figure out? It's got to be able to navigate around the world. It's got to be able to see that object, the mug, right? It's got to be able to, it's got to be able to, it's got to be able to grasp it. It's got to be able to understand that this is a mug with a horse on it. It's not a horse. It's not a, I don't know. It's not a, it's not a cup. I don't know. Right. So there's a whole bunch of different questions that it needs to be able to answer and being able to do these all with things that you have not seen before. Right. Like, like cause we, cause that's one of the core assumptions that we have to make, right. Is that the robot does not like if, if you put a robot into this building, right. Is there a chance that it would have seen any of these objects before? Probably oh, interesting. Not. That's pretty cool, actually. Right? So this is like this is so like if you want a robot that can leave the factory or a mine or some other place, which is sort of a well scoped place, the this becomes this perception and understanding and sort of like doing all the things that we as humans don't even think about, right? Becomes like just such a it's just show soccer, right? Yeah. Welcome to Collaborative with Spencer Krauss. This is a place for accomplished professionals to talk about their life and their work in an informal and hopefully an insightful way. If you like what you see, hit subscribe below. Enjoy the show. So Welcome to Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Chris Paxton. Chris is a senior, senior research scientist in NVIDIA. Um, he gets to play with robots all day. It's a really cool job that I'm jealous of. Chris, welcome to the pod. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to have you. So how'd you get into robotics? I guess, uh, you're more of a software guy, right? Um, so yeah. How, how'd you get on that path? Uh, and what kind of stuff are you personally interested in? in right. The field? Yeah. So, uh, so what I do is I work on learning for task planning. So what that means is that I work on trying to make robots that can perform complex long horizon tasks. So like. Can you get a robot to, how can we build a robot that'll let you, I don't know, help you out in your kitchen or well, like, well, yeah, well, long road, but yeah. So that's yeah, um, long horizon, like moonshot. Right. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Right. So, uh, yeah, eventually we'd uh, like uh, the kind of stuff that I'm interested in doing is eventually trying to make robots smart that can, so they can help you out. Right. That's awesome. In uh, like work in human environments like this, right? Like your robot, your robot shouldn't, oh, should ideally not be like bolted down to a table and stuck doing whatever it is. Right. Yeah. yeah, it seems like a lot of people have that goal, but yeah. actually making it happen is, is a horse of a different color. Right. Well, I think this is a really exciting time to be doing this kind of stuff because it is, in fact, like, uh, I think we are getting as a field, right? As a field, robotics is a, like, I feel like we're getting a lot closer. Some of this is because of things like machine learning. Some of this is because it's like uh, robotics is so much more commoditized now. There's so many more robots in the world, right? Like you can go on uh, Kickstarter and see a dozen or so different cool startups coming up with different ones, right? That's like, awesome. Which I think is, so it's a, it's a really cool time to be in robotics and in uh, the software side of it, all parts of it really though, but you know, yeah. Hardware is fun too, but um, <laughs> I, just, no, I, I just don't know anything about hardware. Yeah. Good. I don't know what's on, bro. <laughs> um, but um, no, I mean, yeah, I, I completely agree. And um, I know we're not going to go into like NVIDIA stuff, but I do want to say that like just the single board compute modules that are coming out now in general, Intel, NVIDIA, whatever, I mean, it's it's world's better than it's ever been. I mean, Moore's Law is still very much a thing as far as I can tell. And um, I mean, the algorithms are better than they've ever been too. So all of it's just driving toward, right. uh, you know, you can do more stuff than you've ever been able to do. Yeah, that's cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, interesting. So. I guess just to kind of go back a step, when did you, in your life, did you decide you wanted to be like a roboticist? So there's a few different answers to that. Yeah. Uh, so, so I guess the, uh, the cliche one would probably be like, so in a, in a high school, middle school, something like this, I started working with robots and like there's Wait, like these after capacity? school clubs. Oh, like, cool. Yeah. Like this, uh, what's the NASA one. So, so they, the kids, kids right now, like they're doing these like first robotics kinds of things. So there yeah. was an off brand competitor to those back when That's I was cool. in called Botball. Which is like, so I, I have to imagine no one has heard of this. I don't think I've ever met anyone. Bot ball. Like Bot robot ball. ball right? Like, yeah. Right. And so it's like a whole Robo gimmick. Cup. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's whole gimmick is that like they're they're autonomous, unlike 
the others like first is all teleoperative, right? Yeah. Which of course makes them. And much... then they added like thirty seconds of autonomous, which wasn't really autonomous. Yeah, right. That's all. That's all cheating. Dead yeah. reckoning nonsense. Right. Well, I mean, this is still dead reckoning, right? I mean, in the end, you're having fourteen year olds put a Lego set together, so this is the limit to how smart the robots are getting, right? But like, yeah. Uh, but yeah. So like, that would be that would be like if you were. Uh, that's not really though, right? Because like, so I, I did computer science. Um, in undergrad, didn't really do did did some robotic I stuff did that then. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like it seems like it's the trend. Everyone does that now. No, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. And I, um, I've been really working with robots ever since. I worked with robots in the like Army Research Lab in undergrad, and then cool. uh, continuing on from there, went to grad school uh, at uh, Johns Hopkins. Can so, you talk about the Army Research Lab at all? Or... Sure. Yeah. What kind of stuff did you work on there? Uh, well, uh, this is this was an undergraduate internship, but yeah, I was doing, okay. <laughs> doing like, I mean, you still get the work on the real things. I mean, then you're yeah. still adjacent. So the, the cool thing about them was that they were doing um, yeah, this is in Adelphi, Maryland. So they're doing they're doing like they 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 have lots of mobile robots. The goal is to have uh, my understanding of the goal here is to have robots that and they're still working on this kind of stuff. They explore different environments, and you detect you want to detect people. You want to you want to keep soldiers safe. You want to map environments without humans there. My particular part of this was pedestrian detection. I was working on that oh, cool. a little bit. Yeah, which is like, yeah. So it's so just like given a picture, where is it? Is there a person in this picture? Right. That's so a, pedestrian is problem. defined as any person on foot. Human on foot. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Correct. Even if they're carrying an assault weapon. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is like again. Yeah. You know, this is this is a research lab, a research project, right? Yeah. Now I'm sure that they're still they are like I said they they're still working on this. I don't know anything about what the kinds of stuff that they're doing now, but yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. I'm sure they're doing much more like that now. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I mean, I don't know the fact that you get to work on that. Well, I guess I didn't do anything like that as an undergrad when I was a grad student. I had yeah. an internship. Um, where I was autonomizing mining vehicles. Which right. Was, well, I guess that wasn't really an internship. It was like the end of my career. It was like my first real job. Right. Okay. But um, what do you do? Am I allowed to ask questions? What do you, what yeah, do, you yeah, do to autonomize mining vehicles? So um, it was for the Joy Mining Corporation. Okay. Um, it was really like four story high mining vehicles, but the oh, mining yeah, yeah. Uh, industry is, is like really resistant to change. So basically, so, um, what we did is my boss called it fast following, which mm -hmm. was like, Kind of the lame excuse for not working on anything very interesting or developing anything out that much right. so like one of the things that was a big innovation that we brought was like developing the kinematics so that the vehicle wouldn't hit itself and cost millions of dollars in machine damage how does it hit itself oh sorry. because it's just stupid sure. and it's all okay. hydraulics sure. and, yeah okay yeah and so um you know, right. if it has like a little bit of awareness of its own frame you can so like they were really small basic like 1980s circa innovations right. being developed and this was in 2014 i did this yeah so, cool yeah um but it, it felt like going in a time machine back like 30 years because i mean the stuff we were you know right. innovating was was you know right not all that innovative <laughs> so. yeah i mean i think this is a big thing with robotics i don't know i feel like like a lot of the solutions that you see deployed in real applications are quite a bit simpler than the kinds of stuff that like i work on in the lab right well, and that makes There's sense a lot though too right yeah. i mean and i've exactly. started to appreciate that more the more i've done research and development because you know on the research side you've got the kind of stuff you do which is you know far out there on the development side which right. is a little more what i do it's still early i do um early stage new product development so yeah. it's uh now in my career stage of product development so basically building like units one through ten of something that's never been made before um but not having to worry about like certifying it for an environment or like you know testing that long tail of things that could break it or anything like that i still try to develop to a standard where it's it's pretty fault tolerant and so um my design philosophy is you know like i wanted to be able to stand up to anything the customer can think of to put it through right um sometimes within a specification but um you know the world's gonna break it like if it, if it were let loose it would get broken pretty quickly right yeah right you can't keep them all in and the lab forever pass, so you know yeah, yeah. A right. or, or a i mean we've we've helped companies get those but that's not right you know it's not where i've chosen to specialize right it's kind of, kind of in the middle yeah right it's and not i think wishy -washy. Yeah. <laughs> sure. right yeah, this is a particularly big issue, I think, when it comes to stuff like perception, right? This is the, the big thing. Well, I don't know what your experience has been, but like, I find that 
like one of the big things that's keeping robots kind of from doing exciting stuff is perception, right? Like you mean like optics to... of what people think of robots? No, I meant, robot I meant how the robot sees the world. Okay, right? yeah. yeah, right. Like, and that, that's the one thing which we're getting much better at thanks to these recent innovations. But like, these are not. That's that's the that's in my one of the riskiest thing, one of the things that like breaks the most as far as like how as far as like what uh right getting things to do do interesting stuff in the robot, right? So, so can you give me an example of that? Because, I mean, I'm just not really a software Yeah, software, so sure, right. So, like, let's say that I'm a robot in, uh, let me think of a good example. Like, sure. if, you, if you're, let's say that I'm a robot in your kitchen, right? Okay. And, like, so I need to, I need to be able to understand everything. Like, I want to be able to differentiate between, like, if I, if I ask you for, sorry, I have a robot like okay so if you if you ask a robot in your kitchen to get me like some particular mug right a mug with a horse on it i don't know yeah. something like this right how does it how is it supposed to figure out it's got to be able to navigate around the world it's got to be able to see that object the mug right it's, like it's it. got to be able to it's got to be able to grasp it it's got to be able to understand that this is a mug with a horse on it it's not a horse it's not a i don't know it's not a it's not a cup i don't know right so there's a whole bunch of different questions that it needs to be able to answer and being able to do these all with things that you have not seen before, right? Like, because we, because that's one of the core assumptions that we have to make, right? Is that the robot does not like if if you put a robot into this building, right? Is there a chance that it would have seen any of these objects before? How oh, interesting. Know. That's pretty cool, actually. Right? So this is like this is so like if you want a robot that can leave the factory or a mine or some other place, which is sort of a well scoped place, the this becomes this perception and understanding and sort of like doing all the things that we as humans don't even think about, right? becomes like just such a it's just show soccer right yeah 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 so that's 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 awesome i mean i i, I guess a lot of times in my work just because i'm i'm not the best at software i'll try to simplify the game right in order to get around having to do that kind of stuff so. well i think i mean but i think that's that's how we get robots to work right now right it's most robots are do not have very complicated perception right if anything right because you like, get a controlled environment or with mining right. we have the advantage of gps and rtk because it was outdoors mm -hmm. yeah like an, an industrial robot will probably have like a couple sensors but there'll be things that like yeah they'll they'll be like signals like you can move now or whatever right they're not going to yeah. be anything that's they're not going to be anything like i know where i am to within yeah. a millimeter but I don't necessarily know anything about the things that are around me. I just know the path that I'm meant exactly. to follow and That's where all. my joints are at. Exactly, right. And so like, I think the big change for robots is solving this problem, right? It's trying to make things that, things like, or at least this is, the, this is in the, on the horizon, right? This is like the long-term problem. And this is like the self driving car problem. That's yeah, pretty yeah. much right. That, like you've got to be, that, that is a very complicated well, I mean, we've seen problem. an example where Uber hit that lady and it basically cleaned them out of money, right? And so, uh, wasn't that it, so this is coming from the lay person in this field and so hopefully i'm understanding this correctly but I, i'm told it was a confidence thing where it, it wasn't sure if it was a person or a bicycle and the confidence on each one was like below 50 percent. so it was just like onward yeah i have i have heard that as well i have no inside information on that what well i would exactly not yeah. so, like, no worries <laughs> yeah, i have no I information figured, you know, like but, somebody that's tried to program for that kind of problem right. you might have some insight you know just, right yeah, well, but like, think about it, right? Like, so you've got a person walking a bike. Is it a bicyclist? No. Is it a pedestrian? Yeah, I guess. But like, there's a bike right there. It's it's it is like when you think about it, like these, it it not be it not being confident in that situation makes sense. You can say other things about whether what it should have done in that situation. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, could have, would have, should have. Right. But... Yeah. I don't know. Right. But like, but that's that's like uh, I don't I don't know any details about that actually. But like, the point is. Um, Right, so it's. I only it's, know what I've heard from the outside. Yeah, as well. right, exactly. Uh, I guess what I'm saying is that, like, so that that kind of thing, though, like uncertainty about how the road about the world around it is like such a is such a big issue. I think, yeah, yeah. When it comes to so, like, in that case, I I don't know. In other cases like this, right, you can imagine just like self driving in general, right? Maybe it's dark. Maybe there's people running around. Who knows, right? Yeah. It's like this. Maybe you see a tricycle which you've never seen right. before, or a yeah. unicycle which you've never seen. Or like before. a deer, even right? Like yeah. or like what we we get like turkeys near here. Like what what if it's never trained yeah, on turkeys? Yeah, that's true. Right? Like you know, if your car is trained in California and you're deploying it here and you see a turkey for the first time, what is it going to do? Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully not. That thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, can you can you make an assumption about and this is purely hypothetical, but like just 
moving object maybe it's alive if it's not it's an rc plane either way maybe i shouldn't hit that thing. well you probably just shouldn't hit stuff honestly yeah. this is probably a good rule for life for a robot but yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. at high speed for sure <laughs> right uh, but i guess that there's like there's a question though like if as a human driving on highway i avoid plastic i don't avoid a plastic bag right yeah that's that is the point. case where i actually can hit something right and these are the yeah. cases that like these guys have to figure out how to solve right that's yeah. an interesting one actually right. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, yeah. I've hit him. I've, I've pulled him out of my uh, my right. air intake on my car. Yeah, it's, again, it's yeah. Oh, there's plenty, you also have plenty of people hit cardboard boxes too. Uh -huh. Unless sometimes it falls off the back of a car and it's got something in it, and then you gotta and you're screwed. Right. So it's not a not a not a, not a super easy problem, no matter how you cut it. These but, are interesting edge cases. Yeah. Like. And like all this is edge cases, though, right? Like that's the thing. Like if you have a person in your house, you expect it to them to like if you ask them for your mug. Right, they're going to be able to find it. If you've right? never Respect. seen a mug, would you know how to find it though, right? Like, uh, oh, that's a cup of the hand. Or just having a training set. Yeah, so if rather, it's I've okay seen mugs to fail. Kid. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, like so, it's okay to fail if you can say why, right? Like, or if you can, or if you can, if you can identify that you failed, right? Because like, and this is the problem in all of these, right? So like, if if you have a robot in someone's house, right? And it can like stop and be like, sorry, I, I don't know what a mug is. Can you tell me what that is? Like that's what you would do, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. I know like if you didn't know what a mug was, right? If if I ask you for a tool or something that you've never seen before, sure, right? And if if you if you're confused, you can call for help, right? And that's how all these systems, I think, to some extent, have to work and to train to learn, right? Yeah, yeah. Because that's how that's how people learn, right? We we don't come sure. out with the magic knowledge of everything in the world, so yeah. this is a mug, right? Yeah, exactly. Cup <laughs> with a handle on it. Yeah. That's a handle. Yeah. Right. That's the At some point, I think, yeah. At some point, you're going to run out of the limits of yeah, how you can talk to. Yeah. But yeah. anyway. That's cool. Yeah. So, I'm trying to think, like, um, I guess what got you interested in going on that path? I mean, because that's a far cry from, you know, like, I guess it's not that far cry from dash tree and detection for an army research lab. <laughs> Well, I think that was more it's like yeah, those right? are the guys. Those are the guys within a but within a bus riding campus. That's a different thing. They were very. It's a very cool problem though. But like, yeah, I think when it comes to it, I think this is one of the things that have been interesting for a long time. So the, the part that I find interesting about it is thinking about like how how do we think about problems, right? And I think that that's and how do we think about problems and how would you build something around from the ground up that can do this? And I again want to be super clear yeah right it's it's very we are very very far from solving from making anything that can think like a person that makes like sense. extremely far like i don't I, yeah like but like like i don't expect to see that in my lifetime right but like that doesn't mean you can't do cool stuff with it right and i think it's still it's it's addressing a lot of interesting problems about how we perceive and interact with the world and we can build some cool 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 useful tools out of it essentially which is all robots are right yeah, yeah so, for sure yeah Right. But it's a fun problem to think about. Like, you know, you're right. probably the first like person that's actually doing interesting stuff with AI, maybe outside of like one guest that I've had on here. So well, I want to ask you everything, but I know so little, I feel like my <laughs> questions are stupid. Yeah. So, I don't know. No, there's no such thing as stupid questions, right? So like, stupid people. <laughs> I mean, I think one of the cool things about AI right now is that it is actually quite easy to get into, right? People have done a, a, the, the way that the research community works is that there there is a very large amount of this stuff is released publicly for free like things tools like pytorch which is the kind of machine learning backbone that we use for everything oh, right cool. is free right uh the data sets are largely free right like so like this is this is basically i and i and i'm sure that in 10 years maybe this won't be the case as if there's actually companies that are like set link in home robots Castle's right it's not releasing right. your data set for exactly hours. <laughs> right well some, some of them are right like argo is and so on right like oh, the actually? yeah there's a bunch of them are actually releasing data sets well, maybe not all of it but like there's a lot of but like that's sure but data like subset. that aside yeah some people do this right but still but still like um i think that it, it is actually like surprisingly approachable i feel like that's i cool. mean and the other thing is that like a lot of all this, the papers are out there. There's like a real trend towards making this stuff easy to read and easy to access, which I think is good because like, I don't know, you don't, I, I think like a lot of our recent like conferences, all the cutting edge research that we do, like all the stuff that I've been doing over the last year is all online. We we, we build websites for it. We like make, we put videos up on YouTube. Do you want to, right? like, hmm? do you want, do you want to mention any of those videos? Can you... oh, it's okay. Not right now. I can, I, I can, I can, I can do it. I can share some later, but yeah, 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 yeah it's, it's right like, We can edit it in. Yeah. But um, not all good too. 
good thing. Yeah, I would have to think about that for a second. But yeah, yeah we got lots of cool stuff. Um, yeah, right. So, so like we we one of the recent things that we did was like handover, human to robot handovers, and things like this. Like oh, little cool. pieces of the well, problem. Like you reach out for something, and the robot hands it to you. Or? You you hold out something, and the robot takes it from you. Oh, that's that right. So like, and that that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got tons of cool videos of these kinds of projects. They're all. There. and like can i ask you, if it's mainly tracking the object the hand the intention both uh it's tracking mostly tracks the hand cool and then tracks the and detects grasps on the object and that's the idea and then you that's have to awesome. move to grab it right so this kind of stuff like so these these are like little tiny pieces of this like this so it's like problem, the confidence right? that you're about to release the grasp or something it's when it goes to grab it um it's mostly just detecting going I mean, to, like, like for, this is the thing about right all these problems and this is to be to be fair like uh, this is uh not to i don't know hype myself too much but the, like this paper won best uh best day dry paper this other at the conference so like this isn't nothing but like yeah as you're saying no it's not doing any of that right like this is just like i feel like there are so many of these perception problems just so hard right that, that's just that kind of just where we are I guess so, many of these right? things. I, like, so i think that it's but I, anyway i thought it's super cool so like the uh yeah, but the point is a lot of these things are all out there and like the techniques are out there, they're well described, they're online, like you can just you can just email the people behind these things, right? That's or awesome. follow them on Twitter or whatever it is, right? So like I think that there it's a, it's a good time to be getting into this kind of thing. Uh, some people might disagree, but I think it is. It's like like it's more accessible than it has ever been in my opinion to do yeah. cutting cool cutting entry research. So, you know, I think that's part of the, Yeah. That's all I want to do, right? Yeah, but nice. Right. I mean, I think that's one of the advantages. One of the cool things about being in research well, is being able to talk about this kind of stuff. Right? What would you recommend to like a young person that wants to get into AI? Like maybe yeah, that's the a high school question. or the, the early college level. Like how, how would you approach that? Right. I mean, I think that if you were high school or college and you wanted to get into AI, the best thing to do would probably right now, I would probably suggest like find find some project that you find exciting on like uh, on GitHub that you think is cool. And then like maybe learn a bit of PyTorch to this library and then try to build up and see if you can run it. That's like awesome. that, like, and you could do that, right? Like it's probably you probably need to learn a few things like how to how to use Git. I, I don't know. Like that's a useful skill though. I mean, yeah, it's a, yeah. I do work keeping right. up. Right. Yeah. You gotta learn how to use Git, you gotta learn how to use, how to use Python and like all these little things. You're gonna be there. ahead of the game if you're yeah. gonna use Git in high school. Right. Nobody coming out of computer science degrees knows how to use Git. Right, exactly. Man, yeah. I didn't learn it in undergrad if you like well that yeah. So, yeah. But like I once sucked. you, get, yeah, right, yeah. But one, but like all this is out there, and like if you find something cool, you can go find one, follow one of these videos, follow a link to the re paper repository, and if it's if it's a simulator, you can probably just download it and try it out, right? Like that's that's kind of where we are for a lot of these things. And now, would you recommend really cool. like digging with it at all, or, or just leaving it as? Oh, sure, you should build it. Yeah, like, you can play around with it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah sure. Well, I mean, yeah. I guess that's the beauty of yeah. open source. You can yeah. the constants. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, like. Right, I think, and you once you that's an accomplishment. Right, once you've got the point where you once you've got to the point where you're running this stuff, like this guy's limit, you can do whatever you want, right? So I think that's exciting. How do you how do you conceptualize something like that as a beginner? And and to be one hundred percent honest, that's what I am. I don't know very much about this. I'm, I'm, there's an ulterior motive here. <laughs> I mean, I guess what well it depends what you, what do you mean? Like, so if I wanted to find a project, like yeah, it's always some kind of yeah. accessible to me. Right. I mean, I think it depends. I mean, I feel like everyone, everyone's like brain works differently, right? In this way. So like, in my opinion, like for me, I like grounding it, right? So this is like, I, the way I would start is if I was starting now, which I write, like if I was starting now, I would go online and I would look up a project. I can think of a couple of them where you would, you would, where you have like, where there's like simulators that you can access and things you can play around with and like, uh, right and some code to use right one that does something exciting but not too complicated right something something where like there's probably the, the github page probably has animated gifs in it like to show That's a robot awesome. doing something something yeah. like this right something where it's like the right, fact that they've done that much effort to yeah. illustrate right. it is, is really cool yeah it's something like this right yeah but like I, I agree and i think it's great that this is now kind of an expectation in certain ways like I mean, it's kind of annoying when it's like, oh man, we're right for the paper deadline. I got to get this website together. But like, I'm glad it, <laughs> I'm glad it, I'm really glad it exists. Right. But like, so then what I would say is that like, what you want to do is you want to take this and you want to um, find something exciting, find something, something that you can simulate and run yourself and download it and just try it up, tr play around with it. Right. And like, yeah, maybe it won't work because they are again, like kind of, right. But like, 
Uh, if it doesn't work, you, uh, yeah, <laughs> add a GitHub issue. I don't know. <laughs> you can message so figure yeah. it out. Right. But like, that's the place to, that's the place I would start. Yeah. That's awesome. But again, that's me. Like, that's the way I, I like learning by like grounding it and like yeah. having something that I can just like look at. Right. And that's part of probably why I'm in robotics and not some other part of computer science. Right. It makes like, a lot of sense. I like seeing able to see it. So Simple, I like right? seeing like I want something, something. I used to always say I want yeah. something I could hold in my hand whenever I was yeah. getting out of my computer science background and getting more into hardware. Yeah. So yeah. I like <laughs> things that interact with the real world. Right. I, I agree. I think that's I think it's super I mean that's the cool thing about robotics, right? Is that we can take we can take something and we can like have a robot that interacts even in some very limited capacity, right? But we can still have something that you can physically see doing something. The, the handoff thing sounds really yeah. cool. Fun stuff. I think yeah. it's a fun project. It's a fun project. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. It's probably a good note to end on. Sure. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to come on? Oh, ridiculous. Right. Okay. Up to you. Yeah. Um, all right, let's cut it there and then we can do this again. Sure. Thanks. That sounds good. Yeah. If you stuck around this long and you like what you've heard, please give us a like and smash that subscribe button. Or smash that like button and give us a subscribe. We're always looking for new and interesting people to have on the show. If you know anyone good, send an email to podcast at ska.solutions or leave a comment below. Thanks again for listening and please come to the next one.